Ladies and gentlemen, the time has come. The moment we've been waiting for for quite a while has finally come. Ducati's new single cylinder engine is in a motorcycle. It's right here. This is the Ducati Hypermotard 698 Mono. And I'm sure you want to know about it, right? So follow along, let's get into it. So when Ducati introduced the uh, Super Quadro Mono engine a couple of years back, the industry kind of went wild because it's not been since the Super Mono of the early 90s, I think it was 93, that Ducati had a single cylinder. And of course, Ducati's origins back in the 60s included singles, but we're not gonna count those for now. We all were wondering, well, what's it gonna be and what's it gonna power and what's it for? The first bike with this new engine is this, the Hypermotard 698 Mono. This is the RVE, and this one next to me on my right is just a standard version. Uh, I'll get into the specifics in just a second, but let's get into some backstory. It was interesting. Most of the times a company will want to build a bike based on like market research and seeing if people will actually buy the thing, if there's a growing segment going. Let's be honest, the only other company making a single cylinder street bike with a big engine, hyper motard, super motard sort of thing is KTM and Husqvarna and Gas Gas. We're gonna combine them in under one umbrella. That, but that's really it, right? And so it seems kind of odd that Ducati would want to play in that field. But uh, this is one of those projects where someone at Ducati just said, hey, why don't we take that really cool Super Quadro engine from the 1299 Panigale, the last V-twin Panigale, chop off one of the cylinders and run wild with that. And everyone kind of looked around and said, yeah, sure, let's do that. That doesn't happen very often. And Duc Ducati being Ducati, if they're gonna commit to a new engine project, they're gonna make it pretty badass. And uh, I did a whole separate video regarding the uh, Super Quadro mono engine, so check for that. The basis of it is like I just said, the 1299 Super Quadro engine, lob off one of the cylinders and you've got this. It's a bit of a lie. It's not actually a 698 like it says on the side of the bike. It's really a 659cc engine. Desmodronic valves, same piston as the 1299, same cylinder head, uh, a single fuel injector, yada yada yada. Very similar engine, just half of the Super Quadro 1299. When it's all said and done, Ducati says this engine makes 77 and a half horsepower and about 46 pound feet of torque. That's a lot from a 659 single. Nearly 80 horse and nearly 50 pound feet. That's very impressive. And then you'll see on this RVE next to me, it has the Terminioni racing exhaust. Not street legal, but if you do add it, it picks up about another seven horsepower. So then you're well and truly into the 80 plus horsepower range on a bike total that weighs 333 pounds ready to go, except for fuel. That's three gallons of fuel. It's a super light bike with a really fun amount of power. Now let's get into some of the specifics here, front to back. Clearly you have the 17 inch wheels, the 120 front. This is a 160 rear, 160, 60 rear to emulate what is offered on the big supermoto market. A big 330 millimeter front disc with a Brembo M4.32 caliper. And then you've got the rear disc as well. Marzaki suspension, on, it's the same on both bikes. Four total turns of adjustment. So a quarter of a turn actually does a lot. And for the fork, there's external adjusters. So you don't need tools to make any of the adjustments. You can just click it with your hands. Um, fully adjustable, both ends, compression, rebound, preload. Obviously, you know, the bars that you can adjust by rotating it on the clamps, depending on your preference. The screen is an LCD screen. It's rather small, but obviously you, there's not the space you can stuff a big TFT like on a Multistrada or a Panigale, but it is an LCD and they have to cram a lot of information onto that screen because Ducati being Ducati, there's a lot of electronics on this thing. Of course, you have the Ducati traction control, wheelie control, ABS, there's even launch control. There is an IMU on this bike. And all of that is to enable some really cool features. There's different ABS modes to allow certain levels of slide because this is a Motard. And if you're not backing it in, are you really riding a Motard? So ABS levels two and three will let you get 
progressively you know, bigger and bigger slides. Three, cuts the slide down quite a bit. You can get a tiny one. Two, lets you get a pretty decent one going. And then one, disconnects the rear ABS altogether, so you're just doing it the old fashioned way. The wheelie control, if you slam it down to level one, which is the lowest setting before you just turn it off, it'll let you just whack the gas open, pull the front tire in the air, and it'll help you just kind of keep it there. If you're already well versed in wheelies, like some of the other people here are, they prefer just to turn all that stuff off and do it the old fashioned way. Myself, I suck at backing it in and I suck at wheelies. So I was trying both of those things with that huge safety net to save me from launching myself into orbit. It's really, really cool. I'll get back to those things in just a second. Let's get back to the riding dynamics of both of them. Like I said before, they both have the same suspension, the RVE and the standard model. The difference between these two is the standard model here comes in the Ducati red paint scheme and does not have a quick shifter, the Ducati quick shifter both directions. The RVE obviously has this, what they call the graffiti livery, and it does come standard with the bi-directional quick shifter up and down. If you look closely, you'll see both these bikes are wearing Pirelli slicks. The standard tires are the uh, Diablo Rosso 4, I believe. But that's about it. Same suspension, same engine tune. Everything is pretty much equal. The Termi exhaust is an accessory. So what you see on this RVE is not how it comes, but the uh, Ducati staff wanted to show us the full potential of the Hypermotard in the RVE form. So let's get into the riding impression, shall we? Riding a Motard, whether it's a 450 or this, a 659, riding a big engine Motard is a ton of fun. We're here in the outskirts of Valencia at the uh, Cartodromo Lucas Guerrero racetrack. Uh, never been here before, but YouTube some videos of this track and you'll see the layout here is a ton of fun. You've got some high speed corners that lead into some tight stuff, perfect for backing it in, some long straights to lift the front tire in the air. And then this infield section that I'm standing in right now is super tight and technical to really get the feel of everything a bike like this can do. And uh, around here, I wasn't I was only tapping fourth gear at the straightaway. Otherwise it was second and third gear most everywhere else. And the thing about Motards is you have a lot of suspension travel. It was what, eight point something inches of travel on both ends. So as it comes in the standard setting here, it's nice and soft for a street ride. Lots of suspension travel, nice and soft and lots of bounce. And I did my first sessions on the standard bike with a, a little bit of a modified setting from stock stock, but a little bit softer than the RVE. And yeah, you could feel the weight transfer from the rear on the gas, from the front on the brakes. And honestly, it felt a little sketchy on the front end. I couldn't really trust it. I later learned that because these both have the same suspension with the RVE, they raised it up by adding some more preload into it and slowed down the compression and rebound damping to nearly closed, one turn away from full closed on both ends. And then they pitched the front end forward a little bit too to get more weight over the front. And that made a world of difference. But my point with that is you can do the same thing to the standard bike. So if you know this isn't your style or if you like the red or whatever it is, you can do the same thing to both bikes. And with a short wheelbase, super lightweight and really wide bars, I mean, you can hustle this thing around this kart track like a toy. It's, it's ridiculous. Funny enough, I was riding Harleys last week and now I'm riding this this week. The difference in my brain of trying to like go from a huge Harley to a 330 pound Hypermotard took some getting used to, but like I said, this feels like a toy. You can bank it over super easily. The rake angle isn't extreme. I think it's about 26 degrees of rake angle, which is actually pretty far out. Um, I think it's about four inches of trail. I'll put the actual number here as well. So the front end geometry puts a really nice planted feeling on the ground. And that's something else Ducati engineers were really focused on. 
because when their test riders were riding the, comp the competitor bikes, they felt like they couldn't tell what the front tire was doing. And so by adjusting the geometry and the wheelbase and the, the setup of the front end, they really wanted to instill confidence in riders to feel what that front end was doing. For me anyway, like I said, the first sessions on this standard bike with the regular settings, it was really feeling a bit vague to me, but once they put the bike more on its nose and slowed down the compression and rebound damping, then it felt more like a familiar sporty bike, super motard to me, where I could actually put it where I wanted to put it and bury the thing on its nose and feel pretty good about it. So. If you're heavier or lighter than me, you might end up being at the extremes of the suspension settings. But if you're about the 160 range, it's pretty darn spot on. Using the brake slide control to get in the corners, it's fun when I could get it to work. They told us, don't bother with the clutch, bang your downshifts, stay on the brake, just bury your foot in the rear brake and add some lean angle and it'll come out on you and it'll just stay there. That's what they said. I tried that and it was very inconsistent on whether or not it would work. But when it did work, damn was it fun. I could just slide it out there knowing that it wasn't gonna do anything silly on me. And then I was, when I was ready to tip it in for the turn, it would go right in and it would just be business as usual. Same thing with the wheelie control. I could get it you know, pointed to the sky. I'm not very good at wheelies, but the times I did get it up, in second gear coming out of some of these slow corners it would just raise up and like stay there and not scare the crap out of me if you're crappy at wheelies and backing it in like i am you're gonna appreciate that more and i'm sure if you were to buy one of these you would learn how to take full advantage of those slide modes and the wheelie control with a day here to get used to the bikes it's not enough time to really you know, play with how those settings are best applied, but you get the idea. So let's get into pricing. The standard bike here is $13,000, $12,999. The RVE here is $14,500. And again, the difference with the RVE is the graffiti livery and the quick shifter. That's it. That's actually pretty low on the hierarchy of Ducati pricing, and that's on purpose. Apart from the Scrambler, which is Ducati's least expensive model, the Hypermotard 698 Mono competes with the Monster for the next lowest price in the Ducati family. And Ducati is really aiming at younger people. I think their, their, their demographics that they were aiming for were like the 18 to like 35 demographic of people who want to join the Ducati family but just can't find the scratch to buy a Panigale or a Super Sport or a Panigale V2 or a Street Fighter V2, something on the lower scale for a cost of entry. This is the bike for them that they're hoping, or the Monster. Um, but they want this to be where the really young buyers join the family and hopefully stay. And I mean, it's an exciting bike. It offers tons of thrills. It's a great and quick way to lose your license. I mean, yeah, it's a ton of fun. Um, I do wonder though, with US riding habits, if this is really gonna stick because this really narrow hypermotard type seat may not be the most comfortable thing for freeway droning, but if you're young, you probably are hardy enough to withstand that kind of a thing. But in a quick nut nutshell, super agile, super quick, engine's a powerhouse. Those numbers are kind of crazy for such a small engine, but the throttle mapping is pretty darn smooth and controllable too. It's basically what I've come to expect from, from Ducati. They've really nailed it as far as technology goes, throttle mapping goes, and how to make a fast bike that's still, in this case, manageable for less experienced riders, and also a ton of fun for those who are experienced. So those are my quick thoughts on the Ducati Hypermotard 698 Mono. This is the RVE, this is the standard. Again, a 659cc engine, not the 698 like it says on the side of the bike. Either way, ton of fun. And like I say in all of these videos, this video is just a supplement to my main written story that you're gonna have to go to motorcycle.com and read there. Uh, as usual, my written story will have more complete thoughts when I can thoroughly download my brain, 
more pictures, more, more specs. Uh, again, it's the more thorough overview of these two models. But uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun and a good, probably a good gateway drug to the world of Ducati. And the beauty of it is, by the time you see this video, bikes are already going to be in dealerships. So if you're curious about it, go check it out. Um, KTM, Husqvarna, Gas Gas, I think Ducati has called you out because this thing's really, really good. When you're able to rev an engine to 10,250, I believe, and just let it sing, this thing's a powerhouse. And uh, it's going to be a good, good bike, a good competitor to the uh, KTM offerings. So. Again, go to Motorcycle.com, read my full review there. I'm done rambling. These things are cool. Go check them out for yourself. Uh, thanks everyone for watching. Leave a comment below if you have questions about these bikes and I'll try and answer them. Or you can just go to my written story. But uh, that's it. Thanks for joining me on this adventure and I'll see you later.